Okay, thank you very much. And uh, at first, uh, uh, thank you to join today's training. And today is the last day of the training, and we nearly take more than uh five seven more than 21 hours together and uh, today the last three hours we will still discuss something about the wireless technology and uh, yesterday we talked two topics one for the fit ap and the key configuration of the ac right if you deploy the fit ap and ac together in your network we have to let the FIT AP get an IP address and then to discover the AC and the join the AC and the get the configuration and also upgrade the version from the AC. So this is the detail we discussed of the yesterday, the first topic. And then AP and AC will establish the cap web tunnel. We have two tunnels, one for the data tunnel and another one for the control tunnel. In the control tunnel, we can get the configuration and also can get the uh, upgrade version from the AC. And later, if we want to forward the message from the terminal, if we use the mode, a centralized mode, we will forward the traffic to the AC use the data channel. And then if we establish the mode is a local forwarding mode, after the AP online successfully, the AP can direct it to the best path and then forward the message to the destination. And this is the first part of the fit AP. And the second part, in the network, if the place is very big and about the signal, we, it will be reduced to when we go uh, go around, when we do when we movement, and uh, the signal will be reduced and far away from the AP. So in this scenario, maybe we will deploy multiple AP in our network, and uh, we have to do the function of roaming. We want the uh, terminal, the station is working, but the service is not disappear. We also can use the origin, uh, the, use the original IP address and use the original VLAN, but still we convey it to the internet. So we will we talk something about the roaming. And about the roaming, it's a little uh, complex because we have to establish several tunnels between the AP or maybe between AP and AC. Also enter AC if the AP located in different ACs we have to establish the channel between the AC and then to force the traffic out. And pay attention to some scenario, for example, in the stadium scenario and the places is very big, but all of the AP provide the service for the same IP address for the same VLAN. In this scenario, we have to disable the roaming. Otherwise, all the traffic will be forwarded to the home AP and the home AP have to force the traffic out. So the performance is very big, high request, very high requirement for the AP. So in this scenario, we have to disable the roaming function. So this is uh, two parts yesterday. And today we still will talk about three parts. If we deploy the AP successfully, we have to do one function we call is optimization. We have to make the signal better for us to improve the experience, experiment, experience for the terminal, for the station. And the second one, if in our network you deploy the AC to manage the APs, if only have one AC and this AC or the link is broken, the network is broken. All the terminals connect with the AP cannot forward the message out. So in this scenario, we also need one technology to improve the reliability. So with the second topic, we will discuss something about the redundancy. And this redundancy is only used for the AC. And of course, about the world network, you also have to keep the network to provide higher, higher availability, like to use the STP, to use the link aggregation, to use the VSU. But the detail part we already discussed last week. And the last one, we also will talk something about the site survey. When we uh, deploy the real devices on the customer, 
on the customer places, we will do the uh, site survey at first. We have to test which places to deploy the APIs better and how many APIs we have to deploy. Because maybe the signal coverage is good, but we also have the limitation of the uh, number capacity. So what's the detail we have to know before we deploy the real devices on the customer site? So this part, we will discuss three topics today. And the last, we will have a brief summary of the whole technology, maybe maybe around 30 minutes, and to discuss uh, the technology from the first part to the last part, why we choose this topic on this training. Because this is the first day when we explain the arrangement of the training, why we choose this technology. So now let's begin the first topic of the optimization. This one is very important because the training is used to discuss every accept and re relevant cons uh, concern requirement of wireless network optimization. Because if you deploy the AP or maybe deploy the AC in your network and you give uh, all the configuration of the devices, the difference between, between the wireless network and the world network is if you deploy the technology on the world tech on the world network, all the devices like the switch, like the router, like the uh, maybe computer, all of them can fold normally because we use a physical cable to connect with each other, and all the devices were located in the same places. But the difference for the wireless is because. Maybe in your network, you also have the other interruption, like your, uh, like some special devices, like the microwave and something like this. So another reason is we will use a wireless cable to connect with each other. And uh, the, uh, the door, the wall, like the water, like the human body, we have a different influence for the network. That's why after we deploy the network successfully, we also have to do one important step is to do the optimization to make the network better to improve the experience for the customer. And about this part, we have to know the first one is what is excellent Wi-Fi experience for the customer? Because maybe now we are engineer, but we also is a customer in the real in the real network. For example, when we go outside for maybe for dinner, for lunch, or maybe we go some garden places to have some activity. And I think everyone will use the phones. The first thing is to connect to the Wi-Fi and then to waste some resources. So we also will have a judgment from the user how to define the excellent Wi-Fi experience. We will have lots of parameters. The first one, maybe we we hope that the signal is full. Someone maybe say, I go around and far away with the AP, I cannot get the signal. So I cannot connect to the network and to waste the resources. So we hope we can have a full signal. And the second one, we hope if the uh, Wi-Fi have some authentication, for example, you click, uh, you click to the government Wi-Fi and then they will ask you to do the authentication. We hope the authentication is faster, no need to enter every parameter step by step. Maybe use the phone, directly click, and then you can visit the internet. So we hope this process also can be faster. And another one, we can provide the smooth internet surfing. When we go around, maybe we uh, all the metric can be uh, all the resources we can visit, although maybe on the car, although maybe on work. And another one, this is seamless roaming. This is a main four uh, requirements we want to use in, in the network. Has a full signal and the uh, faster authentication, smooth internet surfing, we can get the higher speed. And we also can provide the seamless roaming, although maybe we are on the wall on the road, but the resources we can wait all the time. Also, maybe you can lose some packets, but uh, I think it doesn't matter for me. And uh, no need to log in the 
uh, login again and to do the authentication again. So there are four main requirements for us. And how to do the optimization, we also have some tools. Wi-Fi experience is bad. And then we have a tool, this tool we call is WIS, W-I-S. This is the tool of the Regi company. And on this platform, this is a platform that then we can manage the devices and then we can do some config uh, configuration to deploy some service. And the key point of the platform is we can do the optimization on the platform. And maybe you only need to one click, then all the devices can do the optimization automatically. And in some basic scenario, maybe click, click the with platform is enough for us. Of course, in some complex, we'll still have to do the optimization one by one to get the best result. And uh, about this ways, this platform also we are, uh, also is a new topic. We maybe you can, uh, maybe in the future we can discuss it, or maybe you can contact with uh, your post sale to get some information of the ways. And after we do the optimization, maybe from maybe by the ways, maybe we do the optimization manually, and finally we can get the we can get the good experience. So this is uh, the uh, tool we can use. And later, we also will explain some main principles and some parameters, how to judge the optimization and to get the better signal. And how to do the optimization, we have several principles. The first one also is uh, the simplest one. We can optimize the channel. Because about the uh, principle, we have two IF, IF interface. One is 2.4 gigabit radio and another one for five gigabit. This is the first day we discuss the basic principle of the 2.4 gigabit and the five. And uh, about 2.4 gigabit, here totally 13, uh, 13 channels we can use. Even in some diff in some special country, we have 14. And we recommended to use the channel of 1611 because these three channels is not high, uh, is not overlap. So you can use these three channels at in different uh, APs at the same time. It's this is the best solution. If you use the, if your AP only supports the 2.4 gigabit, and uh, in some 5G, yes, with 20 MHz, yes. And if in some high density, like the studio scenario, you, if you deploy the 2.4 gigabit, you can use 1, 5, 9, and 13 at the same time. But pay attention, if you use this channel, maybe we have to change some parameters because um, about this channel, they have a little overlap, uh, overlap, uh, overlap brand. So you have to change some parameters to reduce the bandwidth is shorter. Okay, so this is a 2.5 gigabit. And about the 5G, radio and we can recommend it to use certain non overlapping channel like these channels and about this certain over uh, non overlapping when we choose to deploy 5 gigabit we also have another suggestion and the first part this one this part and the rest part this two part is divided for 5.1 gigabit and uh, Another one for the 5.8 gigabit. So if you have two radios of 5G, and then we suggest to use 5.1, 5.8. Okay, uh, 5.5 channel. Uh, no, um, about the 5, 5G, we only use 5.1 and 5.8 about the uh, normal ra radio AP devices. And we also suggest to use 100, 194. 
uh, that means this one channel and uh, then use this channel. And then we will suggest to use this channel and to use this channel together. And that means 5.1, 5.8, and one by one, because maybe some terminals only support 5.1 brand, or maybe someone only support 5.8 brand. So we suggest to use 5G one by one. And another one is, why we don't use 149 and 153 at the same time? Because on the 5G, we can use some bounding technology to make the 20 MHz to become 40. So in this scenario, we suggest to use this channel at the same time, and we can reserve this channel. Maybe in the future, you need a higher speed and you can use a bind, binding technology. So this is a 5G. And AP deployment planning and the layout should suggest to use a honey hole to memorize, to minimize cross-channel interference and create high density Wi-Fi usage. So this is a suggestion. For example, if you use a 2.4G, uh, you can use 1.5 and uh, 1.5913 at the same time. And this is a location suggestions. And then one honeycomb come, uh, shape, you can make them as a whole part and then to connect with each other. Finally, if in the high density scenario, you can make the topology like this part. Of course, this is a, is a suggestion for the scenario that we have lots of people or maybe your places is very big. And also you can get some uh, get the result like this one. You use the AP and to remember to record, for example, about this AP, 2.4 gigabit, we use the channel is five. And we, if you have two radios and another channel, we use this one, 157. And this is the application of AP, but we use 13 and 165. And another one like this. So finally, we can remember to choose different channel for different APs to avoid the influence as much as possible. And another for the channel optimization, the first one, we suggest to use the waste platform to optimize the development and which can solve most of problems. But if the experience is still not good, we need to optimize manually. Pay attention about this part. We can solve lots of problems. That means not all the problem can be solved. So finally, maybe we still have to optimize manually. And then a few terminals maybe do not support certain channel in the 2.4G. So pay attention about this part. This is a limitation of your terminal. Maybe you deploy one AP and choose the channel is 13, but your terminal cannot search it. Finally, you will find your phone to test the result, but you cannot see the SSID. So this one also maybe is a reason. And how to solve this reason? Maybe you can upgrade the network card driver and then you can find the certain, tra uh, certain channel. And at present, 5G can be planned plan with certain non-overlap channels and the channel resources are abandoned. So that's why in some scenario, we, we say if the protocol, if the devices can support 5G, we will choose 5G at first because there is more channel resources. And uh, we recommended to use uh, 20, M, uh, 20 bandwidth by default. And it can meet the bandwidth requirements of wireless simulation. In some scenario, the 40 bands is not recommended because it may be cause manually interfer interference between the APs. Because if you do the bonding, maybe near the channel, they will, they will have the influence with each other. And the next one, in order to avoid some old terminal do not support the channel from 36 to 64 channels. So we suggest to use these channels and another channel at the same time. So at least maybe one channel can be used for the terminals. 
this is a special for 5G, okay, for 5G, because maybe some older terminals only can support 2.4G, but cannot support 5G. And uh, in this scenario, we also have to deploy the 4G, uh, 2.4G at the same time. And another one for the principle, how to do the optimization. If we choose the correct channel, but we still find some influence in our network. And the second one, we can do the uh, judgment of, uh, we can do some parameters to about the power local. And about the power local, pay attention, you have to know this parameters function. If we change the power local, this is used to control the transmit rate and control the range of the interference. Pay attention what means the transmit rate. The transmission rate means about the terminal. If you want to connect with the SSID, we have totally divided into several steps. The first one, you have to uh, use some control message and then do the transmission with the AP and this message we call it belong to the control message. And about the control message, later we can find the SSID name and then we will uh, associate with the AP. And after we associate successfully, then we will send out some service manager. For example, you visit the YouTube or maybe you open the uh, Laker link and then join the training. This message we call belong to the service message. And the second step, if we change the power local, we will have the limit of the service transmission. We will limit the rate, the rate, how to, what's the highest uh, through output to wait the internet, how, what's the speed to wait the YouTube. So this belongs to the transmission rate. And also, if you change the power local optimization, you can limit the range of the signal coverage. For example, about this AP, by default, if we make the power to become 100%, the range is this one. This is a coverage. If re you reduce the power local smaller, maybe half, and then maybe only we can coverage half a, half a area. So this is uh, the... Uh, function of the power local. So this is the key point of this training topic, the power local. And how to test which power local value is better for us. We can use the test like uh, this one. We have to use a phone and then to use the tool like the fire moho and then to do the test. First, uh, the AP power local is 100%. This means we will use the highest percent and we will test the result. The speed is 445 Mbps. And then you can reduce the power half to become 50%. And then the speed will still is 445. That means if you limit the power to become shorter, half, uh, half of the percent, but the speed still is enough for us to wait the internet. And then you can have the power local again continue to be 25%. The speed is for uh, 45 Mbps. And if continue to become 10, you will find the speed to become smaller than the 25%. So that means we will suggest the setting to maintain good coverage and minimize interference. The power center is 20%. If someone say if I use 100% is also okay, but pay attention, maybe around your computer, you also have the other APs. Maybe all of the AP have the highest 100% power, they will have a big interference. So you have to use your AP user tool to get the uh, smallest value of the power local. And in this value, we still can use the highest through output, uh, throughput rate, half and half. So about this feature, when the structure is very simple, we can find one AP and to measure the pressure power local value like the way we test one by one, uh, half and half.
and then to use the WIS platform to distribute the configuration to make the AP power to become, for example, like 25%. But if the architecture is complex, we suggest to be fine-tuned for each AP one by one. For example, in the studio, uh, studio scenario, maybe we need to deploy lots of APs, but if you directly to make all the AP power local value is smaller, maybe the coverage is not enough for us. And uh, in the high density hole, store the AP under the seat. And in order to reduce the home and body effective, because in the home and body, we have lots of water. And we have to turn before the start of the meeting, need to assign 15% of the external power local. Because maybe in your high density scenario, everyone have a seat now, and the power will be reduced a lot of. So in this scenario, we have to set aside 15% of the extra, uh, extra power local redundancy. So this is a suggestion. And another parameter is the coverage power. And pay attention, the coverage power is, if you change the coverage power, we will have an influence for the management, for the control message, special for the beacon and the pro. And about these two special frame we not discussed before because this is an exchange message between the station and the AP together. And the function is used to control the AP coverage range. For example, like here, if we have two AP and one, the signal is very big, pay attention. By default, if your signal is uh, signal coverage is big, maybe your speed also is, uh, is higher. But if you change the coverage power, you can make Maybe your coverage power, your signal is smaller, but you still can use some higher speed because we can use the power local to control the speed. So coverage power only has the influence to the signal area to make the signal area bigger or smaller. But another one, how to control the speed, how to find a way to wait to the internet, what's the speed you can use, we will use a power local to control. And of course, if you change the power local, you also will have the same influence for the uh, signal area. So pay attention about this part. So if the signal is very big, for example, like this topology, and this is the range for AP1 and another range for the AP2. And you have the terminal station to connect with them. And about the first AP, we will find the signal is dash 62 dBm. But another one for the AP2 is dash 50 dBm. Of course, if we change the coverage power parameters on the AP, when we send out the beacon and the problem message to the terminal, to the station, when station receive it, I can know in these places what's the signal strength of this AP. About the AP1 is dash 62. About AP2, the strength, the signal power is dash 50 dBm. So compared with the value, we know that the AP2 signal is better than AP1. Right, and about the physical places, we also will find the station is connected with AP2 closer than the AP1. So we hope that the station can connect with the AP2 and we can get the higher speed and the closer connection with the AP2. But about the station, about the station, how to do the roaming or not, choose which is the AP we have to connect it According to the parameters on the devices, for example, if the signal is lower than dash 75 dBm, I will choose another one. Otherwise, I think AP1 also can provide the function, provide the service for me. So in this scenario, maybe it's this one we call is roaming stackness. We still connect with the AP1, but actually AP1 is not the best choice for the AP, for the terminal. 
So in this scenario, we want to use a coverage power to change the limitation to change the signal average. For example, to make AP1, the signal is smaller, like dash 75 dBm. So in this scenario, maybe your station will directly choose AP2 as the forwarding out AP. Okay, so this is uh, the function. And uh, the first one, if we have only one power, we, this station will connect with uh, the AP, only one AP. And then we can change the coverage power and uh, limit the range. And the better, this is the first one, recognize AP coverage from the location. And uh, we can change the value to make sure the edge signal strength to become dash 65 dBm. And then if we deploy two AP, and we have the terminal, after we go around and in the middle of these devices, then the AP1, the signal strength is dash 65 dBm, and the AP2, the signal also is dash 5 dBm. So in this scenario, the station will be do the seamless roaming between APs. I, after I go right a little, I will try to directly connect with the AP2 because they have the same strength. Okay, so this is the function of the coverage power. So pay attention about these two parameters. If you change the power local, change the power local, you will reduce the speed and also you will reduce the signal average, uh, a, a signal area. So lots of scenarios we will change the local power. But some special scenario, for example, maybe between these two devices, two APs, and the signal we want to change it to become same and then the station can do the seamless roaming successfully in this scenario, maybe we will change one's coverage power to use the special value of the edge signal strength to become like this example, dash 65 dBm. So in this scenario, we can smoothly roaming between two APs and also can avoid the remote association and the roam, uh, roaming verticals. So this is the function. And of course, in your real network, when you change the signal, you still have a little overlap between two APs. Like this topology, this picture, if there is an empty places, the station will lost a connection with APs. So this is not the last result. But as a result, these two APs, at least we have a little overlap of signal areas to coverage this message. Okay. And uh, another one for the coverage power optimization, we have to make more dual band active terminal access to 5 gigabit. We have to set 2.4 gb channel coverage power configured as 8 dB and smaller than 5G. That means if in our network we use 2.4 g, 4G and 5G at the same time, because 5G, we can have lots of non-overlap channels. So, and also we can provide a higher speed by some special technology. So in this scenario, we hope that the terminal can connect with 5G and has higher priorities than the 2.5 G, uh, 2.4 G. So in this scenario, we can make uh, the coverage power is 8 dB smaller than 5G. So in this scenario, maybe we will find that 5G signal will be stronger than the 2.4G, okay? And pay attention about this one. Coverage radius of 5G will approximately half compared with 2.4G because uh, due to the airspace loss in the high separate uh, transmission, because about the 5G, we have the higher um, frequency. So about the lambda, the uh, wavelength is shorter than the 2.4G. So this is uh, the coverage power. Like this one, 
2.4G signal, the value is dash 80, uh, 60 AM, uh, 68 dBm, but about 5.8G, the signal is dash 65 dBm. So if the terminal search the SSID from two bands, we will choose the 5.8G at first, because this strength is stronger. And the process and the step is in the simple architecture layout, we can find two APs and calculate the coverage area control value. And then use the width to distribute the configuration to APs in bench configuration. All the AP, maybe we can use the same coverage power. And in the complex architecture, we recommend uh, to use special value like the 15 dBm in 5G, 7 dBm in 2.4G. This is uh, the recommended value. And if we, and then we can use a ways to distribute the configuration of all the devices. And later you still have to adjust the AP by one manually because maybe different places, we have different Oscar, Oscar, uh, Oscars we will have some scenario, some places we will have the wall, some places we will have the door. So in the complex architecture, you maybe finally still have to use your phone to test the result and maybe manually to uh, reduce or maybe make bigger of the power value. And for a wireless network scenario, we have to some frequent roaming scenarios. We suggest when you do the roaming test, if your package drop or maybe lost, the count number is over five, then you can reduce the coverage area control setting and then to overcoming the staking client issue. That means when you do the test of the roaming, maybe the signal of the AP1 still is too strong. So, about the physical places, AP2 is better, but you still to connect with AP1, but now the speed is not enough for us to wait the resources. So in this scenario, we hope you can reduce the coverage value and uh, then you can direct it to connect to the AP2 and then to wait the resources. And another one for the high density scenario, Relevant adjustment of the coverage control will help to address the requirement. This is the note. It is necessary to conduct through station roaming test to find out the best balance value for these parameters. So although the first one you have to make the connection and use your phone to test, that the signal is better to connect with the other AP when we do when we own the work when we own work. And the second one, you also have to test the drop account. And later, when you do the coverage, maybe someone says the signal is is uh, too weak for us, too poor for us. But still, we don't change the roaming, and the package is lost. In this scenario, we also have to change the parameter of the coverage area control. And another one recommended to 5G radio share not lower than 10 dBm, whereas the 2.4 gigabit radio lowest value should be 1 dBm. So this is uh, the principle that, that we hope we can connect with 5G has a higher priority than 2.4 G. Okay, so this is uh, the suggestion and the note. In certain scenario, we can shut down on 2.4G, maybe uh, feasible of the fill in high density requirement because maybe some terminals are not support the 5G. And when 5G and 2.4G radio coverage, the power value are disabled to each other, that means the SID less than the 3 dBm different the station may probably attach to 2.4G radio instead of 5G. So this is a note when we deploy the two band at the same time. And for just two APs operate in five separate, separate strands. AP working in 
one uh, 5G, especially because we have two channels we can use on the 5G. One is 5.1G, and the channel range from 36 to 64, and the coverage value suggested to use 3 to 4 dBm. Lower than the other AP operation at 5.8G, the band from 148, 49 to 161, the coverage control setting, which uh, we suggest the 5.1G is lower than 5.8G. That is what to ensure the air connection for stations connected to, a, to either APs. So this is a function. And another one for the coverage power, it was necessary to reserve 3 dBm of the value and uh, allowance for the APs use uh, on high density deployment, especially in stadia scenario, because maybe in the scenario the AP will be installed under the sea, and then we will send the radio power, we will find the radio power is less than the normal we test on some uh, places because of the human body when we have the seat. So this one is very important. By default, maybe we have to reserve 3 dBm for the special scenario of the stadium because maybe we will have lots of people and uh, have a seat here, also have an influence of the signal area. This is a second one. And about the, these three parameters, the first one of the channel, lots of uh, scenario we will choose. And you also can directly use a platform to click and choose a bad channel. And the second one is a power local. These parameters is usually used in our network. And we can change the power and then immediately to have influence of the signal area and also have the influence of the speed. And the third one, if you special places, you want to reduce the coverage, but you don't want to reduce the speed. You also want, you only want to reduce the signal coverage. You can change the power of, you can change the parameters of the control power. So this is the three principles. And the next principle, we also have to uh, consider about the interference avoidance. The interference source are divided into two types, one for the WLAN interference source and another one for non-WLAN interference source. For the WLAN interference source, it's very easy. All the devices use the same protocol of AO2.11, like uh, now I, AP, I deploy the AP1, and some places maybe we also use radio devices use AP2, uh, deploy AP2, but they use a different uh, channel or maybe use the same channel and then we will have an influence. And another one maybe in the same places, we also will deploy the other vendor devices of the AP, they also will have the influence. These devices we call is WLAN interference source because we use the same protocol. And another one, we call it non-WLAN interference. These devices, we don't use as a double, uh, double wireless protocol like AO2.11. And this equipment also don't follow the, print ma the mechanism of the device's communication, SISMA CA. SISMA CA is the mechanism between the AP and the station, how to find the devices and how to avoid the influence this is a mechanism, this, this is a detection mechanism. And uh, as long as in the working status, these devices like the microwave, like the other devices, we will provide a very strong influence for the network. That's why in our deployment, we say, if you deploy the AP in your network, please avoid these devices or maybe far away with these devices. And these devices were working in 2.4G. One, one solution maybe is in your AP, you don't use 2.4G. Otherwise, they will have a big influence with each other. This is uh, the main, uh, main principle we have to know in when we do the optimization. And another one, we also have the other optimized methods. And uh, we only know this principle is enough. 
The first one is user isolation. For example, maybe in the public Wi-Fi scenario, you deploy the Wi-Fi wireless network for one for one gov uh, maybe for the government, and maybe in some public places, and uh, all the terminals no need to communicate with each other. All the stations we only have to wait the public resources is enough. We don't need to do the communication with each other. So in this scenario, we hope that we suggest we can enable the user isolation. And then all the terminals message includes the broadcast message will never forward to the other station. And the command is like this. On the AC devices in the WIDS, then you enable the user isolation on AC and the AP together. And then the configuration will be down to the AP and all the stations only can wait the resources we call is north and uh, east resources. North and, uh, north and south resources. We only can wait, for example, the internet metric. And between the stations metric, we will directly to discard also includes the broadcast message. So this is a function. And of course, maybe in some web page, you only to click to choose the user isolation is enough. And another method is like the world network broadcast isolation. Before we begin to optimize the wireless network, actually about the optimization, we, have, we can divide it into three parts. One is the world network because all the wireless message will be forwarded out pass through the world network. So in the world network, we also can do some optimization, for example, to reduce the broadcast domain as so, as much as possible. So we have some technology like the VLAN, like the port protection, like some RLDP, like some STP principle, something like this. And the second part is the wireless part between the AP communicates with the station, and we also can do some optimization. And also in the AP, we can change some parameters to reduce the signal strength, and then to reduce some uh, special connection with the, the AP. This built to the wireless part. And the third part, you also can do some parameters on the terminal. For example, you can change the roaming and in some fixed places you can make the roaming possible to become smaller because maybe these devices will not go around but in some public devices a lot of people will go around and connect with each other and in this scenario maybe the your terminal also want to do the roaming as much as possible as soon as possible so we can divide the optimization in three parts. And this picture shows the methods how to do the optimization for the wild network. We can add the VLAN, we can add the port, prote port protection, and also we can use the RLDP technology. And pay attention, the wireless network required to support layer three roaming but the switch port protection on the PoE shell will be turned off to prevent roaming failure. So if you want to use layer 3 roaming in your network, you cannot enable the port, protect, uh, port protection. So this is a limitation. And another one for the optimization, this one also usually will be used in our network per user rate limit. We can enable the user speed limitation for different bandwidth requirements. For example, we can divide a different terminal and uh, have different rate, have different priority. And to avoid one terminal take lots of resources to wait the internet, but the rest of the others cannot wait. So in this scenario, we can use a per user rate. And the command is on the configuration of WLAN config one, and the name is Radio. And the WLAN based per user limitation, the upstream, the average rate is 300. The burst date rate is 350. And the downstream speed, we also can have the limit. 
and pay attention. By default, the rate limit value, if you enable, is uh, 8K BPS. And uh, recommended as a burst rate, set to be 1 to 1.2 or uh, choose a 1.5 time from the average date value. So this is a suggestion. Of course, if, the, if you don't assign these parameters, maybe one terminal will take lots of resources to wait the internet, and then the second one have to wait, or maybe the speed is very slow. This one also, lots of time, we, lots of scenario, we will choose to change the parameter. And another one for the egress bandwidth and the contact coin upgrading, upgrade. This is the method, for example, you do all the parameters, but you still found that the egress bandwidth is not enough, it's overutilized. So in this scenario, maybe this is a problem that your egress devices, the coin is not enough. So we can add a special coin service like the radio power catch to address this issue, to address this issue. Like the case study on the airport. The airport internet gateway will never fully utilized before any wireless optimization and upper Upon the RF optimized for the Wi-Fi network, internet bandwidth was const uh, constantly used over 95%. So the Wi-Fi station will enjoy smoothly internet surfing experience after we add the power catch implement. So this also maybe is the reason because your egress devices, the calling message is not enough. The culture message, is, the culture resources is not enough. So you can deploy it. And another one, maybe you can provide the adjustment for low wireless rate. For example, in the, uh, in the internet, we have lots of protocols we can use, right? Like the A2, the 11, A, B, and the G. And this one we can deploy in different uh, 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 different band, 2.4G or maybe 5G. And we can disable this lower rate and to avoid the low rate pull down the air, in the, uh, air interface performance because maybe about these protocols, we will send some control message to the air interface. And then your air interface have lots of ability to deal with this message then the speed also will have the influence. So we can use the command on the AC controller and disable all the speed. And pay attention, area with the poor Wi-Fi coverage and or surfing from the channel interference, it is not recommended to disable the lowest speed rate supported. So if maybe some terminal or maybe special stations only can support these protocols. If you disable it, maybe they cannot connect to the internet. So this is uh, the method. And another one, we also can disable the IM13 because we maybe will deploy the DCA and the TPC function of the IM in order to take up a lot of CPU and memory resources. So if you frequently uh, for the DC and TCP will cause the wireless network is not stable. So maybe we suggest to disable these two functions. This is a command. How to disable these protocols on the uh, L2.11B to and L2.11A to protocols? Of course, by disable, this two, by default, these two functions are disabled. And we also suggest to use ways to optimize the channel and the power automatically. And another one for the beacon period uh, interval adjustment. And uh, the beacon frame is special one because we will use this frame to do the communication with the AP and then we can connect with the devices and to search the SSID and connect it and a social one AP. And by default, we will send out 
the beacon frame, one hundred mls. So the time is very small. So you will find that all the time, every one hundred mls, we will send out one beacon frame in order to let all the devices can, all the terminals can connect with the AP to successfully. So in this scenario, maybe the places your AP, you only have less user will connect with the AP, you can set the time longer, for example, to address the, the time to become 150 ms or maybe 300 ms. So in this scenario, within the certain time, we will send out, we need less resources to send out the beacon frame. And the command is here. You can add the AP configuration and to change the beacon period to become 20 on radio one. And pay attention. If here you make the bacon time longer, we will make the terminal to become the instable connectivity because I have to wait in the passive way, we have to wait a bacon frame and then to connect. If you make the time longer, I have to wait a long time. Right, and uh, recommended the SSID broadcast count per AP. If less than four to attend the good station experience, uh, connective experience. So this is a recommendation of the, of the value. And another one for the CPP TCP AT optimization. This one is special used in the web authentication. In your network, if you have deployed the web authentication, after the station connect with the AP and gets the resources, we also have to establish the web connection. And the web use the TCP connection and the value is 80. So if we use this value and to make the time longer, you need to wait. Someone maybe say lots of people log in our web authentication and I have to wait a long time and then I can open the web page and then to finish the authentication. So in this scenario, maybe you can change the second time. For example, use a command, CPU protect type TCP8 and PPS3000. This is a function. And another one for the optimization is centralized to transmit the AIP guard. Because in the special mode of the centralized transmission, all the message from the station, we have to transfer to AC and let the AC to help us to finish uh, the message forwarding to the destination. So in this scenario, if we have lots of terminal and uh, Every terminal, when we wait uh, the message to different uh, resources, we have to the uh, ARP translation at first. So all the message will be sent out to the AC and the AC give us a reply. But especially who needs the ARP protocol, who needs the ARP resources, this is a gateway. Because some scenario, the station gateway is a call switch or maybe access switch, not about the AC. So we hope that the ARP guard of the station, we can make some other devices to do this function. In this scenario, you can use this command. ARP guard optimization in the NFPP protocols, and you can add the ARP guard trust the host, what's the IP address, what's the MAC address. This is a function of the ARP guard. And uh, after that, we will add the gateway ARP items to the ARP guard trust table. And in this scenario, no need to forward this message to the state, uh, to the AC devices. And another one for the data plan wireless broadcast. And this method is used to forward all the broadcast message to their AI interface. Okay, so this is a function. And uh, it, uh, if we, for the broadcast to the air interface, it will occupy much wireless resources. This is the difference of the wireless and the world network. About the world network, if we set the speed is one gigabit, 
And finally, we can use one gigabit, one gigabit bandwidth to forward out the message. But about the wireless, it's different. Maybe the physical interface is 1G, but we need lots of resources to follow some control plan to detect there is a conflict or not. So in this scenario, we hope that some broadcast message maybe only can be forwarded to the air interface or uh, maybe no need to forward to the air interface. And this air interface can forward some normal message successfully. And in this scenario, we can disable the function of the broadcast or wireless broadcast. And by default, this value is disabled. The configuration is date plan wireless broadcast disabled. And uh, in some special scenario, we hope to enable this function, but by default, this is disabled and we no need to enable it. Best uh, beacon interval for AP. Actually, um, this one, no, no the real or maybe a certain value. Depends on the real devices, on the real scenario. If you have lots of people, lots of terminals, and then you send the beacon, uh, beacon time is too longer, they need uh, more time to connect with devices. But if you make the time too shorter, for example, in the studio places, if you have a meeting or some other activities, we can make the time shorter to let lots of people to connect with us. But after the meeting, maybe you can make the time to be orange, like the 100 ms, or maybe to make it make to become longer. There is no certain value say which one is better, which one is not better, but it depends on your, depends on your real scenario. And the suggestion is by default, we use a 100 ms is enough for us. Okay. So also some other time, like uh, last week, we also discussed some hello message for, yes, for by default, this is 100 ms. Like the other time we talk about in the OSPF, we say OSPF message will send out the hello packets to maintain the relationship. The default time is 10 seconds, is 10 seconds. And we don't say the 10 seconds longer is better or maybe shorter is better. Also depends on your real network. If your network is stable, your, the network topology is uh, impossible to change a long time. You can make the hollow time to become longer, like one minute or something like this. Otherwise, maybe you're up or down, up or down all the time, or lots of time, maybe the network is unstable. You maybe have to shorter the hollow time to make the devices to get the correct routing information. So about the time, there every time, there are no certain value, maybe say shorter is better or longer is better, depends on your real device, real scenario. And another one, the methods we can send out the response RSSI and associate RSSI. And pay attention about this part, because we skip the uh, relationship between the AP and the station, how about the station connect with AP? So this part, maybe uh, some um, frames are a little unfamiliar for us. About the station, how to let the AP help us for the traffic. We also have lots extra, uh, lots, uh, a lot of message exchange between AP and the station. One is a response, one is a social. Response is used, response and the beacon is used to connect with the SSID to let the AP know I am the station and now I want to connect with you and then please let me let you to help me for the traffic. So the first part process is response. And the response value is finally to determine that you can connect with this SSID or not. And there is associate. The associate will be finally to detect you can associate with me or not. If you are not associate with me, I will direct to discuss the message from you.
So we also can change the response ISSI and a social ISSI. For example, here about this uh, client information, we found the first client, the ISSI value is 70. And if you set the ISSI value response value, the time, uh, the value to become 20. Finally, your station cannot search the message, cannot search the SSID, and also cannot connect it. This is a response. So associate means when the user ISSID is smaller than this value, the AP will kick the user out. For example, we set the social ISSID to become 20, and finally we found the ISSID value to become 70. Maybe the uh, station is working, right? And then I would directly delete the, uh, delete the client out of my list. Then your client may be trying to connect with another new AP. So in this scenario, we can take more resources for the terminals, and this terminal can have the stronger signal to connect with me. So this one also is a value. But pay attention, if we change the value to become very big, lots of the stations maybe cannot connect with your network. So pay attention about this part. We can use the command show.11aa and to check the result. And here is some suggestion command. If we config the response ISS value to become very large, it will cause some user cannot access the internet. So we suggest the value is 20. If we config the social ISS value to become very large, for example, the user walking slow on the, on the road and the strength become lower suddenly, then the AP will directly to delete it. To achieve the perfect access and roaming, we suggest to modify the coverage area control. When we change the coverage area control power value, all of the parameters include the ISS, uh, uh, includes the response ISS and the social ISS. Both of them will have the influence. So that's why we say in our network, except the per user speed limitation and some user isolation, some of the other value we suggest to directly change the power local or maybe the coverage area control, because when we change these two parameters, all the other methods will be changed at the same time. So this is better to change the to do the optimization based on the device's whole, not about one parameter. And another one for the band selection, we suggest uh, maybe in our network, let's, uh, if we have 5G, 5G and 2.4G at the same time, and uh, we hope uh, lots of the users can connect to 5G at first. So we can make the signal of 5G about the power is bigger than 2.4G. But if we enable this function, See, enable the 5G priority function. It will cause single frequency terminals which only support 2.4G, a social with uh, slow speed, because not all of the terminals can support 5G, although even now real network, not all the terminals can support the 5G. So in this scenario, we hope that the uh, 2.4G and 5G can be used all the, on the same time. We have to enable these two bands as, uh, at the same time, but the 5G has a stronger signal than the 2.4G. In this scenario, the, if the terminals can support two bands, we will connect 5G at first. If one terminal only can support 2.4G, we still can have one band to support it. Okay, and we suggest to adjust the beacon power by modifying the coverage area control value to ensure the signal strength of 5G receive a little big, a little bit stronger than 2.4G. Then the station can connect to 5G smoothly. 
not directly enable the 5G priority function. Maybe they have the same result, but the principle is different. Okay, that's all about the uh, WLAN optimization. And about this optimization, we talk a lot of parameters of the network and how to change the parameter and to make the experience better. And the key point we say is the first one, you can use the uh, channel, right? About 2.4G and 5G, which channel we can use? We can manually choose or maybe use some platform to choose it. And also maybe some rigid cloud can do the function. And another one we usually do to change the power local or maybe to change the uh, coverage power area, coverage control area to change the signal and change the speed. And some special list, maybe you can limit the per user speed, like the upstream, like the downstream speed. And also some terminals no need to communicate with each other, we can enable the user isolation, something function like this. And the other function we suggest, we only know we have these parameters to do is enough, okay? That's part about the optimization. And if you have any questions, please write down on the chat window and 15 minutes later, and we will continue next part to talk about the uh, redundancy and also for the uh, opt uh, for the site survey function two parts. Fifty minutes la later, maybe come back on thirty five. We will continue next part. Someone say this is free application. Actually, not rigid cloud is is free but the width is not free. And there's a detail of the fee, maybe you can contact with the radius sale team.